program is called Bruce on the Loose. In the past, we have interviewed people around the Wadsworth area. Now we're focusing on reading uh, books to our children. We are involved in the Oasis tutoring program and hope you uh, enjoyed the first three uh, shows we've de uh, developed. Uh, the, the end of June, we did uh, Granite, a book about a uh, lead dog for Susan Butcher, who won four Iditarods uh, going across Alaska. And it was a very uh, interesting book indeed about uh, continuing to do your best. And uh, she had confidence, certainly, in Granite and the rest of her dogs. Then uh, the, the first week of uh, July, we read What Pet Should We Get? A Dr. Seuss book that talked about decision making and how we all need to make decisions. And along with that, Quick as a Cricket, which featured all sorts of uh, interesting and exotic animals that we sometimes have the feeling uh, like the animals. And uh, the last week, uh, Casey at the Bat, uh, uh, development of uh, how we really, uh, our fans have so much faith in our players, and sometimes uh, things don't work out in the way that we had planned. And Casey uh, didn't succeed that time, but I'll bet the next time up, he was going to do a very good job. So those were the first three. And today, we are looking at Greedy Zebra and the uh, Author is uh, Wendy Heidethi, and also Adrienne Kennaway was the illustrator. And just like uh, the illustrator that Mr. Payne did for Casey at the Bat, the illustrator really does a wonderful job of setting the tone for this book. So let's take, take a look at Greedy Zebra, one of our family uh, favorites. Long, long ago, all the animals in the world were a dull, depressing color. No coats, no horns, no spots, and no stripes. Just dull and dusty. Until one stormy day in the heat of a leafy forest of Africa, there was a great rumbling in the earth. And all of a sudden, a huge cave appeared in the ground. A few of the animals crept cautiously up to this new and wonderful sign and when the bravest of them peered into the darkest the darkness he saw something glistening among the rocks the cave was full of furs and skins all glossy and new stepping inside he came across horns and tails of countless shapes and sizes, and needles and threads of a thousand different colors. Trembling with excitement, he rushed out to tell the other animals what he had seen. The news spread far and wide. And soon all the animals were on their way to see the cave, running and jumping and sliding and swinging and slithering through the trees. All that is except one, Greedy Zebra. Greedy Zebra never ever stopped eating. He certainly wasn't going to give up a single mouthful for a silly old cave of any sort. Lots of time to go visiting caves, mumbled Greedy Zebra, st stuffing far and far too much grass into his bulging mouth. Plenty of time, he said. Soon all the animals in the jungle were gathered at the mouth of the cave, waiting for Elephant to speak. Elephant was the one who knew everything. He coughed pompously and addressed the gathering. It is time for you all to have coats, he said. There are all kinds of materials here from which you may choose. You will be issued needles by a rabbit, but there is only one needle each. 
So take good care of it. Now you may get go in, but no shoving and pushing and keep in an orderly line. Meanwhile, greedy zebra was still eating. Munch, munch, he went. This particular grass is so delicious. He stopped to gape at the beautiful thing in front of him. It couldn't be, but it was Sable the antelope, and she was wearing the most glorious new coat and horns. She was wearing horns. When greedy zebra heard that the coat and the horns came from the cave, he trotted on as fast as his fat little legs could carry him. But he couldn't resist leaf here or a succulent blade of grass there. Oh, and that patch was too, too good to pass by without one little bite. Boy, there are some of the some of the coats and everything. From time to time, he met another and another and another. of the wonderful clothed animals. Stopping for a last bite not far from the cave, he watched Leopard finish her sewing. Leopard, as careful as usual, had sewn the most splendid fur coat with spots all over it. Greedy Zebra could not believe his eyes as he watched Leopard wiggle into a perfect fitting fur. I shall have spots like that, he said to himself, and he hurried out eager to reach the cave. But it was a hot day, so he stopped for a cool drink at the stream, and there he came across a patch of the greenest grass he had ever seen. Delicious, he munched, smacking his chubby lips. But at the cave, most of the animals were leaving. Only rhino and elephant were still cutting their material. They had chosen a very strong gray cloth. Poor old rhino, who was very short-sighted, had stuck his horns on any old way and was having a terrible time. He was too nervous to ask Elephant for help because he knew that the pompous animal would only make fun of him. Rhino had dropped his needle, and the more frantically he searched for it, the further into the bush he kicked it. Finally, he put on the baggy coat and stuffed and shuffled off in a bad mood. Just then, greedy zebra trotted by with blades of grass bulging from his mouth. I'll have spots like leopard, he said, and horns like kudu, a mane like lion, and a tail like cheetah. I shall be, I shall be the finest looking animal in the forest. And at the risk of indigestion, he gave a short gallop into the cave. Then he stopped aghast. There was nothing left. No horns, no fine cloth, nothing. Frantically, he searched through the cave, but all he could find were a few strips of black material. Forlornly, he cut them all into the same size and stitch them together. It looks very tight, he thought nervously to himself. Being such a very, very fat zebra, he had a terrible time squeezing into his coat. He pushed and grunted 
and ood and odd and pop. He was inside it. But what a tight fit. It was nearly bursting at the seams around his fat tummy. He trotted down to the stream to take a quick bite of a leafy bush and pop. His coat burst open. Pop, pop, pop. His tubby, tub, his tubby tummy squeezed through the seams. How the monkeys roared with laughter. To this day, his chubby stomach shines through his coat because he is so greedy. And that was a, a family favorite, Greedy Zebra. And I hope uh, that you boys and girls really think about uh, your dealings with other people and how you sometimes have to be patient and go ahead and wait your turn, but don't wait too long because in this case, Greedy Zebra was more interested in eating than he was getting a, a coat. And the zebras today might look very different than they do if you ever go to the Akron or the Cleveland Zoo. So Greedy Zebra basically tells us we need to go ahead and, again, uh, think things out ahead of time, plan, and, be, uh, and not just think of ourselves, but think of other people and, and what happens uh, in all the situations. We have an, another book for you today, and it is entitled Walpole, and the, the author is Sid Hoff. And we have uh, read this before a few times, and it's one of my uh, all-time favorites. So let's see about Walpole. Way up north, where it is always cold, there lived a great herd of walruses. The biggest was Walpole. Walpole loved the cold. Sometimes the walruses pushed each other to get the best place on the rocks, but they never tried to push Walpole. It's time for you to lead the herd, said the oldest walrus. You are the biggest and the strongest. Polar bears never come near us when they see your tusks. I don't want to be leader, said Walpole. I want to take care of baby walruses who have lost their mothers. Walpole gave the little walruses rides on his back and if, as if he were their mother. He found food for them on the ocean floor. And he made sure they did not float away on a piece of ice. The little walruses loved Walpole. They barked like puppy dogs when he walked on his flippers and shook all over. Please be our leader, said the oldest walrus again. No, said Walpole. I'm having too much fun. He dove into the water to find food for seven little walruses. When Walpole came up, he counted the walruses one, two, three, four, five. Two little walruses were missing. Where are they? asked Walpole. They went that way, said the oldest walrus. They went that way, said another walrus. I better find them before something happens to them, said Walpole. Walpole swam away fast. He sw swam to an island of seals. Have you seen any walruses, he asked. Sorry, said the seals. There's no one here with tusks and a mustache. Walpole swam until he came to a whale. Have you seen any walruses? He asked. Maybe I have. Come in and see for yourself, said the whale. 
and he opened his mouth wide, Walpole swam away very fast. He swam to an iceberg, but there were no baby walruses on one end of the iceberg and no baby walruses on the other end of the iceberg. There was only ice. Then Walpole saw an Eskimo boy. His boat was stuck on the ice. Can you get me out? asked the boy. Walpole hit the ice with his tusks. He hit it again and again and again. The ice broke. The boat moved. Thank you for helping me, said the boy. You're welcome, said Walpole. Have you seen any little walruses? No, said the boy, but I heard some barking on the other iceberg. Walpole s swam as fast as he could, and there were the little walruses. They were so happy to see Walpole, they barked and barked. Someday, you will have a nice thick coat of blubber like me, said Walpole, and you will never be cold. Walpole swam back with the two little walruses. Something seems wrong with the herd, they said. Can you swim faster? Walpole swam very fast. He got back to the herd just as a huge polar bear was chasing the oldest walrus. Walpole roared. When the polar bear, polar bear heard him roar, he saw his tusks and he took off in a hurry. You came back just in time to save us, said the other walruses. Now will you be our leader, asked the oldest walrus. Yes, said Walpole, if you still want me, we do, all the walruses roared, and they never had to worry again. Well, that was Walpole, and certainly uh, he was a big helper to a lot of different people in the herd. The little walruses, first and foremost, really had a need to have someone assist them. And Walpole stepped up and helped them. Then, of course, he uh, was, was helping the herd, just being there. Uh, polar bears didn't come and try to take advantage of maybe the youngest or the oldest walruses and try to attack them. And then he helped the Eskimo boy as well get off the ice so he could return home safely. So he certainly was, uh, was an individual and a really big asset to the, uh, to the herd, and he certainly reminds me of some of our fine teachers that we have in our school district as they really look out for our best uh, interests. They really make sure that we have the boots uh, and uh, warm coat in the winter. They want to make sure that everyone has something to eat and make sure the count is correct to send to the office, and they just are very wonderful in helping us with our, with our studies and uh, certainly the most important one is reading, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I hope that you have uh, gotten something out of the first four uh, programs I've done, because reading is so important. It opens up so many uh, worlds to us, and it helps us in all the subjects that we're going to have later with the science, history, math, and so many other foreign language classes we're having along the way. And I thank you for viewing Bruce on the Loose. We'll be back next week. I think we're going to try to maybe do a special book next week, Stranger Danger. Thanks for viewing.